Hi, my name is Matt Johnson and this is my fourth video in how to build your own elements for an outdoor Christmas light show. This is going to be a little bit of a different video because the element I'm building I've actually never built before. So you will be learning as I'm learning. I'm going to be building a pixel wreath. This will allow me to do a lot more effects than what I can currently do with a regular LED wreath. So let's go ahead and get started. As with any new element that I build, the first thing that I've done is created a jig. I haven't finished this jig because I thought I would record it so that you can see the process, but I did go ahead and start it. The first thing that I've done is I've drawn concentric circles on this 3 quarter inch MDF board that represent where I want the rows of pixels to mount on the wreath. I'm going to create two different size wreaths. I'm going to make one larger one and two smaller ones. The larger one will use the outside ring and all three of the inner rings. So it'll have a total of four rings of lights. The smaller wreaths are going to start with this ring here and only use the two inside rings. So that'll give me one size that's about 32 inches in diameter and another size that's 39 inches in diameter. So you'll notice for each ring I've actually drawn two lines. The lines are a half inch apart and the reason I did that is so that the wire frame would have two rails that the pixel could be zip tied between. This is similar in design to how I've done the pixel trees, if you've watched that video. And it worked out well, and it uses the least amount of material. So each ring is actually two circles set apart one half inch. So the first thing I did is I found the center of the board, and I drilled a 5 16 inch hole. Then I found a rod, in this case it's an aluminum rod, and I bent the end about an inch of it so that it could be set down into the hole. And I can use this to draw the circles, make sure that they're perfect. So what I did is I just visually made lines at where I wanted each of the circles to be. And then I measured out on the aluminum bar and drew these faint lines that you probably can't see that represent where I wanted each of the circles. I then put the rod into the hole and held a pencil up against it and simply went in a circle to draw the line. So drawing the line just gives me a visual reference to make sure that where I'm using the router is where I actually want it to cut the, the groove. I'm not actually using the line as a guide for the router. On my router, I have the ability to slide this rod and use it as a guide. So I'll show you that next. So this is the router that I'm going to use for this project to create the grooves. The purpose of the grooves is so that I can set the wireframe rod into the groove and it will hold it in place so that I can tack weld it and ensure that it's a perfect circle and it is aligned exactly where I want it. This router I purchased from Harbor Freight, but it has this nice little feature where you can insert a rod and use that rod as a guide by tightening down these little wing nuts. So I will go ahead and uh, show that process in the next segment. So the next step is taking a 1 8 inch drill bit and drilling a hole right where I want the router to start. 
on each ring. Once all of the holes are drilled, I take and put a 1 8 inch bit into the router that will create a groove. I set the router depth to about just over a quarter inch maybe or about a quarter of an inch. Just enough so that the wireframe will sit down inside the groove. The next step is I've taken the rod and I insert it into the router guide and I don't tighten the wing nuts quite yet. I first will set the rod into the center guide hole and I will move the router so that the bit falls into the 1 8 inch pilot hole that I drilled into the ring. So now my distance is set and I can tighten the wing nuts. So the next step now is to simply turn on the router and guide it in a circle until it creates a groove all the way around. So now that I've drawn my intersection lines, I'm going to go ahead and drill a 1 and 1 8 inch hole that I can use as my point where I weld without burning the wood. I've finished drilling all of my weld holes at each of the wireframe intersection points. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish routing the rest of the grooves to finish up the jig. Now that all the grooves have been routed for the rings, the last step to finishing the jig is to route the lines to hold the wireframes for the intersection pieces. I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of metal as a guide for the router and clamp it at each end to keep the router moving in a straight line. To line up the rail so that it guides the router right along the line, I've created a pilot hole with the 1 8 inch drill bit and set the router into it and then simply move the piece of metal that I'm using as a guide up against the router. I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side to make sure that it's straight. So this is my completed jig. I've finished routing each of the grooves that corresponds to where I'm going to place the wireframe. I also created the holes at the intersections where I'm going to tack weld the wireframe. I want to make sure that the hole's big enough that it doesn't burn the wood while I'm welding it. So this is an example of the wireframe. I purchased a bundle of these at Home Depot. You get 50 in a bundle for $17. I'll go ahead and put on the video what the part number is. But I'm going to go ahead and now bend these and cut them and get them all set into the jig ready to tack weld.
So this is the finished wreath wire frame once it's been removed from the jig. I went ahead and sprayed it with some primer and a light coat of black paint just to protect it and to keep rust from forming where each of the weld joints are located. So I went ahead and created one larger one, it uses all four of the rings on the jig. And then I created two smaller ones. And these only use the inside three rings of the jig. The next step though is to take my pixels. In this case, I'm using the WS2811 pixels in a bullet node style. I like these because they're really reliable. I've had the least amount of problems with this form factor, worrying about water getting into them and causing problems. So anyways, what I'm going to do is along each of these rails, I'm going to zip tie the pixel and then I'm going to take the next one and just butt it right up behind it and zip tie that as well. And I'm just going to keep going until I have four circles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder each circle back to back and then in my sequencing software I will segment them into individual rings so I can do different types of effects. So I'll go over that in a little more detail but I'm going to go ahead and reposition the camera and start zip tying the pixels so you can see that process. So remember this is the first time I've done this too so I may have to take a few different takes to ensure that I find the most efficient way to do this and we'll see how it comes out.